Okay, so over here we have the attenuator project that we made here in the shop. That is a 50 watt attenuator. It's designed for small amplifiers. Uh, I'm going to try to use it on amps that are 20, 25 watts or less, things like the Voxes and the, the Epiphone Valve Junior was the one I sort of started with it for. So we're plugged into a Vox 412 cab down there and we have the little Valve Junior head which is you know allegedly about 5 watts and uh, we'll give it a shot and see how it sounds. Okay, so let's try this out. This Vox cabinet is extremely efficient and extremely loud. As you can see we've got the uh, Valve Junior at what would be approximately 5% volume I guess and the attenuator is in the allow maximum position so plenty loud and then we can back it off let's attenuate some and that successfully cut out a lot of the volume that we didn't want to hear uh, we can do the bright switch which this will allow more frequency through not sure if the camera will hear that and then we can do the extra bright Now, let's do what we plan to do. Let's turn it up. We're attenuated at half. Let's attenuate down more.
that's what we wanted to do. We set out to do it, and it's done, and it works. So, thanks for watching. I know this is probably a little bit more rambly than we usually are, but uh, hey, victory, right? Take care. Okay, so today we're going to make our attenuator for our small amps, and our bill of materials, we have our aluminium box. This is just a standard stock bud box that I perchance to have. Um, I could use a smaller one, but because an L-pad gets warm, having a little bit more surface area would probably be beneficial for it. Um, this one did, did not natively have a lid, so we'll make a plastic lid to put on the bottom, or another metal lid, whatever, I'll fabricate a lid later. Um, bill of materials, we need to use an L-pad, which is this device right here. This is what's going to actually do the attenuating. Um, so we got our L pad. I'm going to use a little bit of thermal compound on it so when it gets warm it'll wick that off to the box. We're going to be putting in a bright switch uh, for attenuation. When you have an attenuator it uh, can roll off the high so we're going to use this on off on type double pull double throw switch. And then I have two capacitors for the bypass uh, of the various frequencies and then we have uh, two jacks for input output so um, basically first thing we're going to do is just mark where we're going to put our components we'll put our L pad like here and our bright switch there and our two input jacks probably out here on the front or something just mark that and drill the holes I don't think that's too exciting and then we'll come back okay so I got the holes drilled in the boxes um, so that's good. And uh, now we just need to construct the circuit. Based on what we have here, uh, your audio in from your amplifier is going to go to pin 3 of there, your audio out comes out of 2, and then 1 goes to earth. So really not a complicated circuit for the L-pad. We're going to put a bypass from the input through the capacitor to pin number 2, which is the audio out. Um, so that's going to allow us to bypass the highs. For the wire, we're going to use a heavier gauge hookup wire that is the same type of gauge as speaker wire. Um, the schematic for these is really pretty straightforward and readily available, so I don't know that I need to get too, too bananas on explaining it, but um, anyway, we'll get to soldering here. Um, let's see. So. Based on my distances, because this box is kind of deep, I'm going to solder stuff outside the box and then put it in the box. That's the goal anyway. So, and technically I should only need to earth, because this chassis shell is earthed, I should only technically have to earth one of the two. Um, pins the input and the output because the other one will be earthed by default. So um, anyway, there's the ring that's our ground. So we'll put a piece of wire from ground to the ground which would be pin number one on our L pad. So exciting stuff. You see, will that wire even go through the hole? No, it will not. So, this is too heavy a wire to go through the hole, so we'll just have to try to put it up there in a firm, good connection and give it a nice flat solder that won't pull off. So we'll tin our wire here. Where the heck is our solder reel? It's back here. Okay. Yeah, it's better to fault on using a heavier wire than it is a using a thinner wire because a heavier wire will be able to handle the temperatures associated with an L-pad, which is going to get a little warm. Okay. Tin one end. 
Is this even on camera? Yeah, it is. Okay, good. In the other end. I probably made that wire a little long, but it's got to go from the input jack up here to pin number one of the L pad. So that's not too far off. It's a little on the long side, but not bad. And that's our center, so that's going to be our ground. Let me tin the heck out of this. Okay. And that should be stuck on there very thoroughly. I can't pull that off at all. So I'm comfortable with that. And since this is going to be our audio in, our audio in will need to go to one of two places. It can either go straight to... Oh, wait a minute, I'm, I got my brain backwards. This is the ground portion. That's the ring, so ground is going to go to pin one period paragraph. So let's see, and of course that won't fit through there either because it won't. So let's tin that up. And that's a nice thorough solder connection. I don't see that popping off easily. So there's the ground to ground. So that's good. And then we're going to do, we're doing the signal in, but we're going to want to put the bypass option on there. So, okay, let me think for two seconds. To go in, the signal is going to go into, and see what's stupid is I could have just drawn the schematic out. Our signal is going to go in to three and come out of two, but I need to be able to bypass three to two in the event that we are going to be bypassing the highs for our bright switches. Tin that, tin that. We're trying to, oh good, let's drop the solder reel and then spin it all over the place. We want to be thorough with the tinning process. So, as to ensure a good, easy connection. And it's still pretty freaking hot.
looks like a good connection, feels like a good connection. Therefore it is. Okay, and then we're going to go to one of these points of the switch. So this will be the one that's going to go to two. And um, this is for our bypass switch. And I'm going to have to solder two leads to one side of the post. Uh, yep. Yeah. Let me think, yes. So this is going to go to here and then to number three. Will that go through the hole? Of course it won't. This is going to be fun. Let me get the other wire that's going to go on there tinned first. Okay. Let's touch hot wires, people. Let's not wait till they cool off. Let's touch them now. So we jump out of our skin when we touch them and they burn us. That sounds very smart. Okay, and then I'll tin the switch here. Tin that thoroughly. should be able to solder all that jazz together in one shot. Okay. And we'll check our connections routinely just by seeing if I can pull them apart. Um, it would be ideal if we could make a mechanical connection, but we'd need to drill all the holes and all the components even bigger. And I'm not intending on running very, very high wattage through this. This is a 50 watt L pad, and uh, we're definitely not going to be running 50 watts even through it. We're going to be running significantly less. Okay, so we're going to tin up pin 3, which is our audio in pin. And pin 3 is audio in, and then pin 2 is audio out. You may want to clamp these if you don't have a particularly steady hand. I'm actually having a pretty steady hand today, so that feels pretty good. Okay, so there's phase one. That's for our input. Now for our output, we're going to go from output jack to center of switch to two. Or I'm, yeah, because two's out, so yes. So we're going to go from 2 to switch to out. Okay, so tin up some more wires for that. And 
and I, I will not uh, bore you with this. Okay, so the core of this thing is wired. We've got our input. Excuse me. We've got, this is, first of all, that's earth. So input is coming to this port of the switch. <laughs> it's going to three. And then output would be coming out of two, going to this side of the switch, and then to here. So what we want to be able to do is our input and output, which are on these two poles, we want to be able to bypass certain frequencies for bright switches. And that would be, that would happen if we were to flip the switch to one position or the other and put capacitors across here. So I have two different values that we're going to put across there. We have uh, 4.7, and these have to be non-polarized capacitors. So these have to be like crossover capacitors, for specifically for audio. And then we have the 2.2. So we've got 2.2 and 4.7, which should give us two different degrees of brightness. Um, yep, so we're going to put those two in and solder those, and then we're ready to put it in the box. Okay, so if you don't understand what the deal is with the bright switch, if you recall certain frequencies, AC high frequencies, you know, above a certain point can pass through given capacitors with ease. DC and lower frequencies cannot, so what, we've, what we're effectively doing is by flipping the switch to one direction or the other, is we're throwing this capacitor into the circuit allowing the higher frequencies to bypass the L pad before getting to the output. That's why we call it a bright switch. So that looks like it's wired up and we're going to stick it in the box and we'll see if it works. Okay, so I've got it all in the box. We have a 50 watt 16 ohm attenuator which 50 watts is its max so you probably use this on 25 watt and below amplifiers. If you really wanted to nuke the signal down to nothing, we've got our bypass switch, and we've got our out and our in. So when we flip it over, out's going to be over there, and in's going to be here. So that being like a stomp box, that'll remind me, and we'll label this up. Um, yeah, so that'll be cool.